I'll go high. I have wings. Why would I go low? She fights for justice in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as the unstoppable wasp. Now this proud Canadian is entertaining an even younger crowd with a new children's book. It's called Say It, The Squeaker Walkers, Act <laughs> One. Say it like that. The, the demise of Selma the Spoiled. Please welcome back to BT, the Canadian beauty so down to earth, Evangeline Lally. It's so good to see you. So good to see you. Okay, the this name. Wonkers. The Squeaker Wonkers. I like wonkers. how you take it up and you squeak it. It really the makes me laugh. Wonkers. Where did you come up with the Squeaker Wonkers? I, believe it or not, came up with that name when I was 14 years old. I was a big fan of Dr. Zeus. Obviously, I was a very poor reader if I was reading Zeus at 14, <laughs> but I was a poor reader. And, um, and I thought it was so cool that he had this irreverent use of language where he would just make up words when he didn't have the right rhyming word at the end of his rhyme. Yeah. And I was like, I want to make up my own words. So I made a list of words, and one of the words in that list just felt good on my tongue. It didn't seem completely ridiculous, and it was squicker wonker stayed with I was you like, but what is a squicker wonker and then this voice came into my head that said the name is squicker wonker perhaps unknown to you but that's it squicker wonker <gasps> and this is what squicker wonkers do oh it's so and cool. i was like oh it's a story it's a story oh, oh my god and then you know 20 years later i decided i would actually give them to kids i think you already gift. have the movie ready with that I'll of course say. obviously yes. you could voice all the characters no i do voice all the characters all i have audiobooks there's four audiobooks out there's only two hard copy books out okay four of the 20 audiobooks are out and i voice three of them and i do all 10 characters it's ridiculous oh i let my weird flag fly oh, let's hear, all can we, over oh, the let's place hear a little bit of it um yeah You're here let's yeah of up. course this is so amazing. i should go to the the character part or maybe i should just start with selma because we don't have much time i'll start with selma okay. all right all right, here we go, kids. Ready? Kids, come, come. <clears throat> Gather around. Give me a treat. I want that dress. I insist that you come out to play. It seemed nothing had changed, for the girl was deranged in her need to have things her own way. A much bigger toy. A jester for me. I want my own traveling show. What Selma would choose, no one dared to refuse. The answer could never be no. Does that sound familiar? Woo! You could, read the phone, you could read the phone book. Yes. Do you recognize that child at all? These are cautionary tales for modern day brats. Yeah. So I feel like now it is. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of people are trying not to brat. answer the question <laughs> right now. I was a yeah, brat as a kid. Were you that. a brat? Of, yeah, of course. I, I have two brats. I right. have two boys at home who are total brats. These, and the illustrations in this, they're, uh, they're quite, are they scary? Like. You, yeah, the... I think they're creepy, yeah. and I think you're scared of them if you're afraid of creepy things. Right. And if you're not, you're delighted by them, which is like <laughs> me as a kid. I was like, ooh, this is great. So, there, I mean, um, you know, I think that there's a darkness to them for sure, and the darkness is really intentional, and I, I think that children really delight in, in feeling a little bit afraid, and it mm. sort of it piques their senses. And also, in the Grimm's Brother tradition, my stories don't end the way a lot of stories do nowadays. There's a lot, there, there's very, you know, bad endings to my stories, and, and the lesson behind that is, you know, we've sort of forgotten to tell kids that there are consequences to your actions. I think nowadays we're much more likely to say it's the teacher's fault right. it's your mommy's fault right. oh it's your friend's fault it's not your fault don't no worry no accountability and I think it's really important that in our stories in a safe place we teach kids about being accountable for their actions yeah. what do your kids think of this because they're the best test audience for you my uh, my son, my oldest son is eight years old and I've been reading these books to him since he was three and he's gone through such an amazing arc of rela you know, his relationship to these books. At one point when he was about five or six, he was too cool to <laughs> affirm anything mom did. He's like, yeah, mom, they're not that good. <laughs> and now he's eight, and I've read them at his school, and I've now written you know, four of them, and he's heard the audiobooks. And he got hooked when he heard the demise of Andy the Arrogant, because suddenly there's this male character that he could really relate to, because... He's arrogant, mm. and he knows it because I call him out on it all the time. <laughs> right. And he was like, you could see him kind of like, oh, that one's me, you know. And, and and but he got really into it at that point. And now he'll like spend an hour asking me what's coming next, and then how did how, what's their demise, and he wants to know everything. So do yeah. they have input for it when you're writing? Do the kid do, do you come uh, run it by them? Yes, I always read it to my older son before I 
finish the final edit and I get his feedback. I've also used him as a guinea pig for choosing things on the cover. Like I'll show him two covers and say, which one would you grab at which the pops. bookstore? Yeah. yeah. And it's really interesting because when I ask him why, he has surprisingly intelligent reasons that I can see as an adult and go, you know, you're right. Like mm -hmm. that, that's mm -hmm. true. Um, and, and he loves humor. He likes the minions and he likes anything that makes him laugh. So it's really challenged me to really punch the humor in my books, which they're always supposed to be funny. But with him as an audience member, I really feel even more challenged to make them as funny as I can make them. I want to end it on this beautiful picture of you and your mom. You posted this a little while ago. My gosh, stunning. Is, did she instill all this love of reading? Like you said, even though you found it a bit challenging growing up, did she make sure she practiced it with you as well? You know what's so interesting? It was actually her father who I consider my um, reading and writing inspiration. My mm -hmm. grandfather introduced me to Edward Gorey when I was a little girl, mm -hmm. and I loved him. He was one of the only books or only authors that I liked his books because I didn't really like books very much. And so these are sort of an ode to Edward Gorey mm -hmm. and my very grandfather. Cool. Well, I'm sure yeah. your sons think the same of you because you're an incredible mama oh, and a superhero in Endgame. Can't talk about that. Don't want to give away any spoilers of away. Course. It's always spoilers. I mean, <laughs> forever. There's going to be spoilers to that movie if you haven't seen it, right? Oh, it right. Was epic. Yeah, right. Who hasn't epic. seen it? Who hasn't Three seen people. it? Hasn't seen Three people. Jordy's one of them, and there's two other people yeah, in, uh, exactly. in London, I think, that I'm seeing. But guess <laughs> what? You can see Evangeline in the flesh today, and yes, she's just as lovely in the flesh. She's signing, she's shining books and doing a, a reading of the Squeaker Wonkers tonight at 7 p.m. at Indigo Bay in Bloor. What is it? The Squeaker Wonkers. The Squeaker Wonkers. There